Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on the AES round transformation. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to, we have only one outcome for the day, that is we are going to understand all the four transformations that are used in the round function of the AES encryption and decryption process. Before seeing all the four transformations that are used, let's see what happens in the AES encryption and decryption algorithm and we will also quickly run through what happens in every round. We have already seen this elaborately in the previous lectures that the input playing text is going to be converted into the cipher text and the key size can be varying. The key size can be 128 bits or 192 bits or 256 bits. But the plain text size and the cipher text size remains the same, which is of 128 bits. And we have already seen that all the rounds are going to use a 128 bit round key, which is in other words 16 bytes. Also, the number of rounds are going to be varying as per the key size. So the number of rounds can be 10, 12 or 14 based on the key size. And also we have seen the AES encryption and decryption in the last lecture. And we have seen that all the rounds except the last round will have four transformations and the transformations are substitute by it, shift rows, mix columns and add round key and the last round is going to contain only three transformations which is sub bytes, shift rows, add round key. Now the topic of the day is understanding what happens in every round that is what are all the various transformations that are used in every round. Let's see that now. Basically we have four transformation functions. Number 1, the substitute bytes or sub bytes. Number 2, shift rows. Number 3, mix columns. And number 4, add round key. So these 4 activities are there in every round except the last round. In the last round, we will have 3 activities or 3 transformations except this one, the mix columns. Before going into that, we should understand why do we need this AES transformation functions. Because the plain text is going to be converted into cipher text. Obviously, any encryption algorithm should have two important properties. Can you recollect what are they? They are confusion and diffusion. So we need both substitution and transposition or permutation related stuff in the encryption algorithm. So these four transformation functions are just added to the encryption algorithm in order to have the properties confusion and diffusion. Can you just look into the names and tell me how many substitutions and how many permutations are there in this four transformation functions? The name says substitute bytes is simply substitution. Shift rows. So the name says that we are going to shift the rows so the order or the position of the letters are going to be changed. So this is permutation. Mix columns. The name says that we are going to mix the columns so new values are going to be generated. So this is also like substitution. Once you add the round key, when you have the data and when you perform XOR with the round key value, obviously you will get new value, it is also substitution. So out of these four transformations, we can see there are three substitutions and one permutation function which is shift rows. So let's focus on the first transformation function which is the substitute bytes or simply sub bytes. This is merely a lookup table. Say for example, we have an input state array like this and also we have an SBOX here. This S box is going to be a 16 cross 16 S box. So we will be obviously having 16 rows and 16 columns. Before entering the sub bytes function, let's assume we have a matrix like this. Now every individual cell is going to be replaced by other values. Say for example, S00 is going to be replaced with S-00. Similarly, S33 is going to be replaced with S-33. So all the values are going to be substituted with the new values by merely looking up this substitution table. So this substitution table as I mentioned it is a 16 cross 16 table. Let's assume this value is exactly matching to this x position and this y position. So whatever it is there in this value because this is the intersection point of x and y. So whatever is there this value is actually replaced here. And that is why I said sub bytes is simply a lookup table where one value is going to be replaced by other values as per the table, the substitution table. We are done with dealing sub bytes or substitute bytes. Let's now move on to shift rows, the second transformation function. What happens in shift rows? Let's assume before entering the shift rows function, we have the input state array like this S00 to S33. So this is first row, second row, third row and fourth row. So how this transformation is happening? The first row remains untouched. Can you see here? 
S00, S01, S02, S03 is remained as S00, 01, 02 and 03 as such. So there is no shifting operation is performed on the first row. And coming to the second row, the second row is going to be shifted exactly one place. Can you see here this value is shifted to this place, this is shifted to this place, this is shifted to this place and whatever we have here this is shifted to this place. Can you see here before shifting we have 10, 11, 12 and 13. After shifting what happens? This S13, just refer this diagram, the value of this cell takes this position and the value of this cell takes this position, the value of this cell takes this position and whatever we have it here, it takes this position. So S13 comes here, S12 comes here, S11 comes here and S10 comes here. So that is what this diagram says. And coming to the third row, can you see here? This value takes a two jump. That is the value in the cell is going to this place. The value in this cell is going to take this place and the value in this cell is going to take this place and the value in the cell it's going to take this place. We are going to shift the rows two times here. So what happens if the input is like this 2 0 2 1 2 2 and 2 3. This is before shifting. So after shifting what happens? Whatever is there it takes this place. So S 2 3 is actually coming to this place that is the value whatever was there previously in S21 is now going to be replaced with S23. Can you see here? S23 takes this place. And similarly, S22 takes two places, this place. So S22 takes this place. Can you see here? S22 takes this place. And what happens to S20? This takes this place, right? S20 is in this place. And S21 takes this place, that is this place. So this is the shift row operation in the third row. And coming to the fourth row, can you see here, this shift is like this value is going to this place, this value is going to this place, this is going to take this place and whatever we have here, this is going to take this place. That means S3,0 is going to take this place. Can you see here, S3,0 is going to be placed here, 3,1 is placed here, 3,2 is placed here. That is 3,1 here and 3,2 here and whatever we have here that is taking this place. So S3,3 is placed here. In simple terms, the first row of the state is not altered. The second row is performed with a 1 byte left circular shift. The third row is performed with a 2 byte left circular shift. And the fourth row is performed with a 3 byte left circular shift. This is what the shift row operation is. We are done with dealing the first two, the sub bytes and the shift rows. And coming to the third one which is the mix columns. The operation is very simple. If you see before entering this transformation function, let's assume we have the data in the state array as S00, S01 up to S33. What happens after transformation? Simply a matrix multiplication. A predefined matrix value is placed here. A simple matrix multiplication is performed and the value is exactly placed here. What is the order of this matrix? It's a 4 cross 4 matrix. And what is the order of this matrix? This is also a 4 cross 4 matrix. So a 4 cross 4 matrix when it is multiplied with another 4 cross 4 matrix obviously the output is going to be 4 cross 4 matrix. So all these values are going to be changed like this. So all S values are going to be changed as S dash. We are done with dealing the third transformation which is mix columns and we have only one thing left which is adding the round key which is so simple it's merely a simple XOR operation. Do you remember what's the round key we are getting for every round? four words we are getting, right? Say for example, for the initial transformation, we have the simple add round key operation. Four words we are getting from the key scheduling algorithm. What are all the four words? W0, W1, W2 and W3. So in generic, WI, WI plus 1, WI plus 2 and WI plus 3 are the data that is given by the key scheduling algorithm as the round key. Now a simple bitwise XOR operation is carried out between the input matrix and the round key. Say for example, this column is XOR with this column. The second column of the input matrix is XOR with this one. The third column is XOR with this value. And the fourth column is XOR with this value. This is a word actually, right? In a word, it is of 32 bits. 32 bits means what? 4 bytes, isn't it? So we have 4 bytes here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So every column contains 4 bytes. So performing an XOR operation is not a big deal here. So before entering the add round key transformation, let's assume we have all the values like this and I have given the notation as yes for each cell. Now after adding the round key, we will be having S dash. Can you see here? All the values are S dash. 
adding the round key means it's simply a bitwise XR operation. So we have understood what are all the various transformations that happen in rounds. One is the subbytes, which is substitution. The other one is shift rows, which is permutation. The third one is mix columns. This is also substitution. And the fourth one is adding the round key. This is also substitution. So all the rounds will be having the transformation functions. And the last round will have only three transformation where mix column will not be available. And all other rounds will have all the four transformation functions. Now we have clearly understood what happens in every transformation function. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the four transformations in AES encryption and decryption process. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.